Thank you, and thank you for the invitation to be here. Um, I will just uh, give some uh, explanation about uh, how we have been doing in Denmark and make reference uh, to how it uh, fit into Estonia. Uh, my first experience being involved in, in wind energy uh, was, uh, like you can see on the picture here, the two wind farms uh, out of Co uh, outside Copenhagen, where we have uh, half of the wind farms uh, in both farms are belonging to cooperatives. But uh, I have my background in, in industrial development and helping companies to do business plans uh, in renewable energy. Well, cooperatives in Denmark, uh, here's just a rough picture. We, we started off with agriculture already more than 100 years ago. So uh, about more than 50% uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, organized as uh, cooperatives. Uh, we have shops, we have water supply. Water supply is almost everywhere uh, a cooperative uh, or organized. And uh, in energy, it's a power distribution. Uh, are almost all companies, uh, uh, non-profit um, uh, cooperatives. We have power production in wind, 18%. Uh, we have in district heating 460, a plant which is almost uh, more than 80%, and we have uh, biogas, uh, only a few plants uh, up till now. Why a cooperative? A cooperative is uh, established, in my opinion, to solve a problem, very simply. And if we take two examples here, uh, district heating could also be water supply, we have to produce heat for the individual houses, apartments, uh, municipality buildings, and we have to do that in the most efficient way. So uh, you have to organize your pipe system, you have to organize your production facility, and we organize that in a non-profit uh, way. So this is really where everybody can see the benefit of doing it together, and uh, we can see the benefit, as I will illustrate by another slide, I believe that uh, if you have companies like uh, Eon, they have been establishing uh, quite a lot of gas-fired district heating plants uh, at a time where it was difficult to get uh, a cooperative uh, accepted. Uh, and they are all taken over, if possible, by cooperatives today because they cannot see any reason to pay a dividend to, to Eon to pay the very high service costs they are using. They can feel they can make it much cheaper minimum 20% cheaper, in fact. Uh, wind farms, wind farms are completely different because we very early realized in Denmark that it's far too complicated to organize uh, having the power used in your own household. So we are producing electricity for the society and sell it on the open market. And um, uh, you can ask, why do we do that in a cooperative? Well, the first 20 years, from 1980 to 2000, there was nobody else that wanted it. Utilities hated it. They really tried to sabotage it. So um, up until they were separated with the distribution companies from the production company. And you know, exactly one day after that has happened in 1999, more than 10% was possible to adopt in the, in the grid system. 20% was possible, half a year after 50% was possible. Today we have more than 40%. So you can see there was probably a competition situation also there. Uh, in the last years, uh, utilities have a high interest in, in uh, wind energy, but they have realized they can only do that onshore if they work together with cooperatives because people don't accept people coming from far away, like Copenhagen, going to the western part of Denmark, putting up wind farms. They want wind farms to be organized locally. We also even have that today in, in our laws. Well, a cooperative company uh, where the profit, if any profit, uh, is first taxed uh, when it's distributed. That's quite important because that's a difference between a, a limited company uh, and a cooperative in our law system. You can start up activities and you don't have to make a very complicated reporting system and account system uh, because you have to pay tax out of the profit. You can accumulate the profit and, and, and uh, then first when you really want to distribute it, you can distribute it. Uh, and the key element that's already mentioned, one person, one entity, one vote. 
independent are you if you are a municipality, you are a company, or you are just a group of people. Uh, the decision process is by that way democratic, but and by bylaws, um, you allow ordinary people uh, to participate without involving lawyers and auditors. But don't forget, I mean, um, uh, the profit distributed is dis distributed based on the input you have been doing, the number of shares you have, or the number, the cubic meter of wood you are injected if it's a forest uh, a cooperative. In district heating, uh, partners are very different. That's why we, we, we have realized uh, uh, it's more easy to use a cooperative so you don't have a very few people dominating. So you can call it a, dem a democracy organization. It gives also the people the courage to participate, in fact, where we have seen. In wind farms, exactly the same. Um, and in common, the organization and the startup is simple at a low cost. What's the advantage? Using a cooperative in comparison to a, a limited company it's a very simple upstart as already uh, 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 talked about. Uh, second, you gather people locally in a, uh, for a shared purpose, like setting up electricity, uh, using forests, uh, waste, uh, uh, creating heat. So, and you, you, you are open for all kinds of people. And uh, as there was one discussion uh, this morning, uh, we have exactly the same experience in Denmark, plus 50 or 45 years, that's for the people that are active. Uh, but we have no people getting older. Uh, of course, if people don't manage, they, they just step out. Local profit is uh, giving a higher acceptance of things like the visual impact from wind. It's quite simple. The government introduced that system realizing that if we really want wind to be a big player in the Danish energy system, you have to have the acceptance from the people. And the easiest way to get the acceptance has shown up to be just ask them to participate and have some profit. Local environment also typically gives easier and a more informal planning system. That has shown, at least. The disadvantage it can be uh, that uh, municipalities from time to time and some industries uh, have some problems uh, with the uh, way you are constructing the cooperative uh, because you have maybe uh, uh, unlimited share of responsibility. That has been solved using a company type called uh, uh, cooperative with uh, restricted responsibility, amber in Danish, or similar. Uh, there are different ways to do that. But you can also do it, of course, uh, in a limited, or you can do it with some, some uh, companies between. I mean, if a company or municipality want to be involved, they can create another company to do the uh, uh, work. Some peoples uh, in industry and municipalities are not used to that open dialogue. I have really to, to, to warn about that. We have learned that that if you are working with the people on the street, you, you are open. And you have really to realize that uh, some people in industries uh, and municipalities are not used to work that way. That information is out on the street before your boss is seeing it. That's a very key problem very often. I mean, it's not a problem to keep secret if, I mean, you made a tender procedure, of course, you, you make it, uh, keep it by yourself. But the, the system that your boss and your boss boss knowing things later than maybe the, than his neighbor, that has been a problem sometimes. Well, pitfalls, conflicts of interest. I, I can see that in some of your products here, proposal in Estonia. Uh, things like using waste wood uh, for, a, for a district heating plants. Uh, you have to realize that you have one group of people having interest in the wastewood, you have another group having interest uh, in the heating, uh, being so cheap as possible. You may have some people in both uh, groups, and if you don't make very strict limits, it may create a lot of problems. 
Production of electricity, we have, the, uh, I see this also here with the Parky project, uh, with, a, with a science park. Uh, if somebody wants electricity at a, at a favorable price compared to the selling price in general, then you immediately get a problem. Uh, who should have the profit? Should it be cooperative or should it be uh, the people getting the, the cheap electricity? So you have to make that very clear at a very early stage. Uh, and as already here mentioned, simple poor purchase agreement uh, uh, and regulation and approval of the system if you're producing electricity. Um, it's so easy to, to sabotage a product by negotiating for years. Uh, I can tell you that I have been, uh, been working establishing that kind of project uh, with the Japanese government uh, and uh, now having that permission to do that locally in the province with the Nova Scotia government in Canada and I forgot both of them, the power purchase agreement. And uh, so if you want to sabotage, you, you negotiate for three years and of course everybody has lost their confidence. Well, for Estonia, please remember uh, a Danish energy policy from central to decentralized. Uh, that has happened in, in 20 years. Uh, and, um, and that may give some, some discussion between the old players organizing large concentrated uh, power plants uh, with the new actors in the market using smaller utility, small uh, combined heat and power plant or wind turbines. But um, if you don't like that development, I'm not sure you need to have a cooperative system because then it's much easier. And it takes time. Uh, and that's also one recommendation today. You need to activate a lot of people and sometimes they just have something else to do uh, because they are not in one company, they are just in a lot of different activities. And uh, that could be a, a, a time-consuming process, could also be just that some simple question that need to be asked, answered, it may not be answered if you don't have a place to put up. We have created this kind of cooperative organization for district heating, power plants, the organization for wind turbine owners, where you have technical help and loyal help and all this kind of thing. But it is possible. As mentioned already, uh, I've been uh, involved in these two uh, issues in Japan uh, where, where we have civil um, uh, local government uh, delegations coming uh, to Denmark to study our system because they want decentralized power. And they got some permission now from the central government. And uh, we have in Canada where they want to make uh, put up wind turbines by the First Nation uh, uh, people, the Indians. Uh, and uh, it was quite difficult uh, because they have a very centralized uh, utility uh, that don't see that very funny to put up a two megawatt turbines in a lot of villages. So my suggestion, a follow-up in law and regulations, a follow-up system for helping uh, for the first initiative not to, uh, to continue, and uh, focus on um, things already on the way, having a potential, and information, of course, about successful initiatives. And, uh, well, it was, in fact, my last slide, and, and uh, I have a few more slides you can study, if you like, about examples for district heating and wind. But I usually I, I ending up with a picture of this kind. It was a shop established in 1892 in the small island of Bornholm because they want to profit locally. They don't want this uh, rich merchant uh, uh, um, owners of shops from Copenhagen to have all the profit. So they just organize themselves. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Hans. Um, yeah, uh, needed. Uh, you have been involved in the cooperative, energy cooperative movement in, in Denmark for, for many years. What is your, your experience? How long does it take uh, for one cooperative initiative from the first meeting 
till uh, it starts uh, production or, or when it's uh, vital already? Is it uh, like one year, three years? How many meetings? Yes. <laughs> uh, I can mention the first wind farm uh, we established in 1996. It, uh, it took uh, one and a half year. It was uh, just simple seven turbines on, on uh, and uh, and there was no, and we, we even had to, to beg for help by utility because they were partners, but they were only partners because the mayor in Copenhagen wanted them to be partners. She was a left wing mayor. But, but, and then the second project took, uh, the middle ground project did took four years. And the four years, first of all, because we made a bad proposal, so we, we lost one year in, in fin finding out how to make uh, the design of the turbine layout in a, in a nicer way. Uh, so the public didn't like our first proposal. So, so, the, uh, so it's a question about planning most of it uh, and getting people active, of course. But, but uh, it can be done uh, in, a, in a very short time. I mean, the last took over of a district heating plant, uh, just a neighbor, municipality where I'm living myself. I've been following that in the local newspaper, that took over from Ian. And the risk was that to pay a very high fee uh, for the heating or to establish something themselves and take over. That took only one year. <laughs> okay, thank you. And we, we have one more question from audience. Hi. So actually, do you have any case with unsuccessful creation of the cooperative based on the single wind turbine or wind, wind farm? For example, why I'm asking, in my own village we are trying also to, to launch the wind energy or wind turbine based uh, energy cooperative and we were stuck with the unwilling to cooperate of the person who lives to the closest to the wind farm or the wind, wind turbine and we can't convince him. Do you have any case to okay. share? Or so, what? So do, we, do, we, do we need to tie him? Do we need to give him more shares? What do we need to do? <laughs> um, my experience very, very rough about wind energy. If people don't like wind, you cannot convince them in the first hand and, and forget it go to another place in your, your effort. But we have learned if people are against wind, that as soon as the wind farm is up, uh, they want more wind farms. So there's a natural fear of what you don't know. It's a bit typical in Denmark. If you go to an area with a lot of wind farms at the west coast, northwest, people like much more. If you go to the close to Copenhagen where the nature is not very good for wind, bad wind, and people don't like it because they don't know. They were really surprised our first reaction from a, an other NGO group in Copenhagen to the project out in the sea was noise. Oh no, we don't like all that noise in our new beach project that we're prolonging the key beach out in the sea. Not knowing anything about that noise from two kilometers distant was not an issue at all. So the only way to convince them was to take a visit to another wind farm. Thank you.